In just a few minutes, small business owners can now sign up for Blackfoot Communication Services. Whether it's dependable voice options or internet services, sign up simply by visiting blackfootsmallbusiness.com. Click on the services you wish, select an installation time and date, and you're done. Small business services at the touch of your fingers. Connect to more with Blackfoot Communications and blackfootsmallbusiness.com. What's up, everybody? Coulter Nuanez, SkylineSportsMT.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and following along and watching. This is a new series that we got going here. Try to give more YouTube content because uh, that's what the kids say. That's what the, that's, that's what you want. So happy to be here. This is our players to watch. And guess what? We got a Big Sky Conference edition of it. We're going to be talking about Portland State. The Vikings coming to Montana to take on the second-ranked Grizzlies. Grizz off to a great start, uh, 3-0 and uh, so far uh, in their non-conference and certainly one of the favorites in the Big Sky Conference this season. Portland State 0-2, a heartbreaker at San Jose State. They had uh, San Jose State beat, but they weren't able to close that game out. Then the next week they played at Washington, got rolled up 52-6. to A 21-17 loss to San Jose State, by the way. Uh, but this is an 0-2 team that I think has a lot more talent than most people in the league thinks. Portland State, I, I spent last week in Portland, and I will say the biggest issue that Portland State has is they don't have anybody to tell their story. I, I think that the, the Oregon media uh, treats them as, as an afterthought. They don't get nearly the coverage as the Oregon Ducks, the Oregon State Beavers, the Portland Trailblazers. And that's not that uncommon. I mean, it's very similar as what Sacramento State's got going on in their media market. But Portland State has a little bit more tradition than what most people would give them credit for. They've had a lot more success than most people remember them for. And I think this is a talented team. I think that Bobby Houck, Montana head coach, if he was being honest with you, would tell you that while South Dakota, who came to Missoula and was a playoff team a year ago and gave the Grizz a little bit of a test, but a 24-7 loss for the Coyotes against Montana in their most recent home game, I think Bobby Houck would tell you, though, that Portland State's the best team that Montana has played so far. And I think that that starts with some of the top-level talent that they got on their roster. Portland State landed three guys on the preseason all-conference team. This is what I'm talking about when people don't that, – that, that Portland State doesn't have someone to tell their story. If I was to ask you who led the Big Sky Conference in catches, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns a year ago, you probably would gravitate towards – to Lolo Limu Jones from Eastern Washington, Lance McCutcheon from Montana State. But during the regular season, it was Bo Kelly. He won the Triple Crown in the Big Sky Conference, catches, receiving yards, and touchdowns uh, for Portland State. Also, who is the only first-team all-league returning defensive lineman in the Big Sky Conference? Most people would not say V.J. Mallow of Portland State, but that's the answer, and he's a senior and then you got Anthony Adams, who's a multiple-time All-American there at Portland State in the defensive secondary. So a, a lot of talent. And that's not to mention that I think Portland State has some of the better, uh, probably the best group of wide receivers in, in the Big Sky Conference. And I know that there's some guys on the rise at Eastern Washington and, and the headliners there at Eastern Washington in Frey Roberson and, and Efton Chisholm the third. Those guys are good players, really good players. For In fact, I think Chisholm is one of the best in the league. Pierre Williams is going to give you a, a pretty good group if he's the headliner of the group at Sac State. And Montana has a whole bunch of guys that are on the rise, and we'll see what they become. But guys like Junior Bergen and Aaron Font certainly have the talent to be some of the best in the league. But as far as proven guys with production and pedigree, Portland State's got a, a quartet that's very, very impressive. So that's all to say this is a very talented Vikings team coming to town. Here's sort of the tail of the tape there with Portland State. Bruce Barnum's the head coach. He's entering his seventh year uh, as the head coach. His first year, his best year. He was the offensive coordinator under Nigel Burton uh, for a half dozen years before taking over at Portland State. In 2015, their run uh, was, was magical. They beat two FBS opponents. I believe that's the only time a Big Sky team has done that. They won at Washington State, and they destroyed North Texas. Largest margin of victory. Uh, in the history of an FCS over an FBS in that one. Since then, though, Barney's really tried to remake this roster 
in a more traditional fashion, way more high school recruiting, not nearly the reliance on the junior college ranks. They still have a fair amount of transfers because everybody does uh, in this day and age in college football. This is a big year for Portland State. They had a great year, year one. They were really down the next couple years as they rebuilt it. They've been sort of right there at 500 the last couple years. And I think they think internally that they're going to be a, a, a contender to make a run at one of the four or five spots for the playoffs in the Big Sky Conference. Uh, but I think that that's going to start with at least a respectable showing, if not some sort of an upset uh, in Montana against uh, Montana in Missoula. So here's a look at the players to watch. The one uh, big question mark is what can Dante Sachere become? He's the quarterback there at Portland State. He's a redshirt sophomore. He backed up Davis Alexander the last two years. Davis Alexander, for my money, was one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league. I know the coaches in the league really liked him. He was a second-team All-League selection last year behind Eric Berrier, who won the Walter Payton Award. So uh, not not too shabby coming up runner-up to that guy in terms of all-conference accolades. But Sachere is very much in the mold of what Bruce Barnum likes in his quarterbacks. Athletic, can extend the play, can extend the pocket, a, a dual-threat guy. Uh, so we'll see what, what Sachere can become. I, I was with Bruce Barnum last week when I was in Portland, and he said that the kid physically has all the tools. He just needs to catch up mentally. Uh, they're trying to simplify the game plan for him so he can play fast. How close is he to doing that? If and when he is healthy, though, or excuse me, when he is caught up, he's got a ton of weapons, starting with Bo Kelly, who, who was uh, the Triple Crown winner in the Big Sky Conference uh, last year. They also have Emmanuel Dagbe, who was uh, one of the biggest physical specimens in the league. He's probably their best player coming into last year, and then he tore his groin, and he's had a little bit of a problem uh, coming back from that. M- Mataio? I'm going to pronounce his last name right. I, I, got, I got a lesson for this uh, from Noah Naamoyakiola, who was a great Polynesian linebacker at Montana State. Matio Talale Talale Motu. Talale Motu. <laughs> Either way, he's a really good player as well. He, he hails from Beaverton. He's a local guy. Uh, he's a guy that's familiar to both Cats and Grizz fans because he's had huge games uh, against those two teams. So he he's a guy that uh, can definitely hurt you for sure. And then they also have Darian Chase, who's a former four-star recruit who is a transfer from Nebraska and a guy that was supposed to be an impact player in the Big Ten, just didn't really find a way to settle in there uh, with Big Red, but certainly a really talented guy. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any town pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Defensively, it all starts with Anthony Adams. Uh, Portland State runs this crazy flex defense that was first made uh, prominent in the early 1990s with uh, the Arizona Wildcats. They call it the Desert Storm. Teddy Bruschi famously was the the linchpin of it. And it was also very uh, successful at Cal Poly. Payat Sudam, who's the defensive coordinator there at Portland State, he came from Cal Poly. He was with Rich Ellerson at Cal Poly. And that little run... Cal Poly had several of the most productive players, uh, quite frankly, in the history of the FCS. Uh, Kyle Shotwell and um, Chris Gokong, who went on to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, They had three straight Buck Buchanan Award winners, and that's kind of what the flex does. It puts certain guys in the position to make all sorts of plays. They try to confuse you with their pre-snap reads, their multiple fronts. They move the flex around, and that's one of the reasons Anthony Adams has been an All-American multiple times, because... He's the one that kind of moves around a lot. Because of that, he's going to get his hands on so many different passes. So he's had unbelievable numbers of pass breakups and interceptions because he's put in a position to make those plays, and that's why you see uh, those eye-popping numbers. Then the last guy to watch defensively is V.J. Mallow. He's one of the best junior college transfers to come to uh, the Big Sky Conference uh, in the last several years. The Big Sky has sort of gravitated away from J.C. guys because you can get so many FBS drop-down guys now. But Malo is a really good J.C. guy. Uh, he came from Gold West College, and uh, the last couple years he has um, really had big numbers. 
He had 20 tackles for loss and 10 and a half sacks a year ago, so he was the leading returning sack guy among defensive linemen in the league. Second returning leading sack man behind Patrick O'Connell. Uh, so VJ Mallo, certainly a player to watch as well. So there you go. That's your players to watch for the Portland State Vikings as they make their way to Missoula, Montana for homecoming on Saturday, September 24th. Thanks for following along. Thanks for reading along. Thanks to Andrew Houghton for preparing this first look. And thanks to you for watching our players to watch for the Portland State Vikings. Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any town pump across Montana. Plus earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Town.